Hello, in this video we're going to look at weighted least squares regression and we're also going to take a twist where we use Mahalanova's distance for our inner product. Um, but before I start I have to give a, a shout out and thanks to all the subscribers. I started this channel a little less than two years ago and I was happy to get one or two subscribers a month and now I'm getting more than that in a day. Um, I've got so much positive feedback from the subscribers and viewers in general. It's, you know, I love it. I just love doing this. And I so enjoy that others are getting benefit from this too. So much appreciated. And there's so much more to come. Now here in this video, we're going to uh, change the inner product a little bit. Now, the inner product is, is, can be thought of as a measure of distance, in a sense. And so the standard inner product is the dot product. And then if you look at the norm, it could, that, is, that measures a distance, or how long that vector is. And we're going to bring in the Mahalanova's distance as the inner product. So the inner product will be this, where this is a V inverse is a symmetric positive definite matrix and then the measure of distance of the norm will be this we take the square root of it now for this to be symmetric and positive definite it's actually a requirement for this to be or meet the definition of a true inner product and so as in most videos at some point you have to stop and assume there's some background knowledge and then that's one of the pieces that we'll assume in this video is that you're familiar with, semi-familiar with inner products. So here we're going to jump right into multiple linear regression. We're going to assume that our data follows some sort of linear model, X, beta, plus epsilon. And here we're going to assume that epsilon is multivariate normal with mean zero and variance covariance matrix sigma V, where V is a known symmetric positive definite matrix. So this is not, we're not in the standard multiple regression setting where this is the identity matrix. Um, we're going to let V to the one half be a square root matrix of V. And I have square root matrix in quotes because I have a video titled square root matrix if you want to review that topic. And now this square root matrix is if you multiply it times itself, you get V. You know, it's like taking the square root of that. The V to the one half, V to the minus one half, those are inverse matrices, so it's I. V to the minus one half, minus, you know, V to the minus one half, when combined, is V inverse. And so what we do in this setting, and what's commonly done, and what was done in my linear algebra class, or a... Um, linear models class is you, you pre-multiply by V to the minus one half to every piece of this linear model. And then you you call it, you, you know, you reparameterize it. So this is you, Y star is equal to, um, you know, and then you call this X star, right? And then you call this um, epsilon star. So then we just reparameterize it. Note that the variance of epsilon star, you know, is this. So you take out the v to the one half in the front and v to the one half in the back, and they're symmetric, so there's no transpose in the back, you know, and, and it's variance of epsilon in the middle, which is sigma squared v, which then those make the identity matrix. And so our new model is this. And actually, this should have a star right there. But now, epsilon is multivariate normal, zero sigma squared i. So this actually fits in the standard uh, linear regression model. And, um, or the ordinary least squared regression. And so, if we were to, if we get rid of this, and I would say, how would you solve this? So it's a matrix times an unknown vector. 
equal a constant vector. Well, you we're going to have to pre-multiply that somehow, but that's not necessarily um, full column rank. So then we create what's called a least squares inverse matrix of that. And we get this right here. And this is actually so standard and taught so much, I'm not going to review the jump from here to here. Um, I have a video called least squares inverse matrix that you can look up to see how this was determined to pre sort of pre-multiply that both sides and you get and that isolates the beta and we get this. You could also take uh, this x to the other side so it's y minus x star beta equal to this and then you can use the standard inner product and and find the length of this vector which you really want to be as close as possible to zero. So let's minimize it, take the derivative, you know, solve for beta, and you end up with this. Now let's put back in what we defined, y star, x star, and epsilon star in here. And we get this, and then it simplifies to this. And so this is your standard weighted least squares regression. And um, so, so really nothing new. But the new part is part two, where instead of using the, the standard inner product, we use Mahalanobis distance for our inner product. So we have the same setup, same as one. So this is multivariate normal zero uh, sigma squared V. And we're going to let our inner product be, oh, this. So really there should not be a, um, a square root around that. So this is our standard inner product, and then if we want to find the length of it, the norm, then we end up taking the square root. So here we have uh, epsilon, we subtract uh, x beta to the other side, we get epsilon. Now we want to my, minimize this squared distance, you know, with respect to our new inner product. And to find the length of this. Now we remember we want this to be really close to the zero vector. So we're gonna we're gonna minimize it. So what we do is we find the squared length, um, which then we put this in our our new inner product. So this is epsilon transpose, and then um, this is epsilon, and of course that's the uh, known component of the variance covariance matrix. You know, with that together, that's the inverse. So this is Mah Mahalanova's distance. So now let's put in what we know for epsilon, which is y minus x bar beta into both of those. Let's distribute this. So then this can be written in this form. And then one note here that this is a one by one matrix or, you know, a constant. So if we take the transpose of it, it's actually the same thing, one by one. But when you take the transpose, you get this form. So there's actually two of those. And so that's where we get the two here. And then we take that, distribute the transpose in, and then just we consider this a whole matrix. And I do that because in the next step, when we take the partials of this uh, squared distance, in my mind, this is easier to differentiate. So the constant out front comes down. There's no beta here, so it's constant and goes away. What's out front here is you get the transpose of that back, which is this. And then here you get two times this matrix times beta. And then uh, we set it equal to zero. And here's a side note. This is what's called denominator notation. There's actually numerator notation and mixed notation. And I would, uh, I think the matrix calculus on the Wikipedia page does a great job of explaining the differences. And a lot of people jump back and forth between numerator, denominator, and mixed notation. But this is denominator notation. So now when we set it equal to zero and solve for beta, um, the, this constant can go to the other side. The twos, we can divide everywhere by two. This is negative, we take it to the other side and we get this. Now here, if I were to say, um, 
and give you this on a test. We have a matrix times a vector equal to some vector. I'd say, how would you solve that? And then you say, well, is this full column rank? You know, is it a is it a singular matrix, non-singular, you know, etc. Well, it's more than likely non-singular, and um, we would have to solve it using a generalized inverse matrix method. And I have a video called Generalized Inverse Matrix if you want to um, see how this is so easily solved by this. We just kind of left multiplied by the generalized inverse matrix. And in, and in a sense, that's not 100% accurate, but that's kind of the way I think about it. And so it's the same. And so using a, the Mahalanova's distance as our inner product, and then just minimizing that squared distance, we ended up with the same weighted least squares regression coefficient. You know, the same betas, 100% the same. And so I just think that's kind of neat. Um, here's a little trivia question for you. In this step here, I use the generalized inverse matrix to solve for this beta. Why didn't I use the least squares inverse matrix? Well, the answer is because we're using the least squares technique to solve this equation. And so we're just solving it. And the way you solve it is the generalized inverse matrix method. On two, or on, on video number one, here we have an equation, right? So we want to solve this using the least squares technique and then that ends up being the least squares inverse matrix. So notice that we didn't run this through our inner product, you know, the stand, the dot product, take the derivative and solve it. This is a way to kind of skip that step. And so we could just go straight to the least squares inverse matrix. Where here, we're using the least, you know, we're trying to find the minimum of this, you know, least squares. And so we just solve the equation, which is what this is. Anyway, it's the same. So a, a few notes. Um, now, originally I wanted to do, and I still want to do, uh, videos on generalized least uh, linear models, the GLM models. And so going through that, I'm like, well, how, you know, we have to know about optimizing. So I did a video on, you know, Gauss. Newton method, newton rapson method, and then I was going to just jump right in. And I'm like, well, really, we need to know about the iteratively reweighted least squares method to solve GLMs. But then I'm like, well, I better do something on uh, weighted least squares regression. And so this is the way my mind works. You know, in anything you prove, it's like, how far do you go back? And I thought, well, I want to go back and talk about least or weighted least squares regression. And in that, and I thought, you know what, some more videos is this. So here we have beta hat. But if we take pre, if we left multiply by X, we get Y hat. That's the fitted model. But this is this beta hat is you know this piece here but you but it, when we left multiply you can kind of think this is as one matrix call it a and it's kind of like the hat matrix in ordinary least squares regression and so in the next few videos i want to show that that the hat matrix and this matrix a have a lot of things in common you know both their the column spaces of a and X are the same. Um, it's, it's an oblique projection matrix with respect to the standard inner product, but it's actually a perpendicular projection matrix with respect to the Mahalanobis distance that we developed in this video. And also, I want to look at some of the properties of estimability of these beta parameters. So this is going to be the next few videos. And then I'm going to jump back to GLM models. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Um, many thanks for the support over the past two years. Much, much appreciated. 
Um, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.